What is up you guys, Josh from Supplement World here. Today I wanted to talk about something that I think is really important, it has to do with product quality. And when it comes to the products we sell, supplements, you're actually ingesting these products. You're putting them into your body, most of them every single day. It's not just a phone case or an electronic or something where hey, if it's less quality, it just turns out that it doesn't do its job very well and you throw it out. This is actually stuff that can affect and impact your health. So I came across an article that I wanted to share that I'm just gonna pull up here and it has to do with the category of product that we're getting asked about quite regularly lately which is creatine gummies so we have refused to bring in any creatine gummies because there have just been so many quality control issues with so many of the different ones out there most of these are just people have found creatine gummies listed on alibaba imported them they haven't tested them they have no idea what's actually in them they slap a label on them and they start selling them. And now I think there is a little bit of burden on people to do some due diligence when they start selling supplements and bringing things in that they're going to be getting people to actually ingest. But I don't think most of these people are doing it with bad intentions. I just think they have no idea that what they're selling isn't actually what it says it is. The article says now tests creatine gummies finding almost have to be severely under strength. So now as a supplement brand manufacturer, they make good quality products. We don't actually carry any of them, um, not for any bad reason. We just have alternatives that we prefer. Uh, supplement manufacturer now testing 12 brands of creatine gummies, found five of them failed to meet the label claim. All the failing products also showed signs of creatine degradation. So they probably already broke down into creatine before people even had the chance to take the product. At a glance, now finds Five of 12 creatine gummy brands have little to none of active ingredient. All failing products also showed signs of degradation. Now was surprised to find that gummy testing labs are hard to find. Yeah, so that's why like this is key. That's why you don't see a lot of the gummy brands actually getting tested. There's not a lot of the labs that do the testing for these other supplement brands are able to do testing on gummies right now. So there's tons of third-party tested supplement brands, and that's basically all that we really get behind and recommend because we just think it's so important to have that third-party test. There's been so much stuff going on in this industry that without that third-party testing, I just have a tough time really getting behind it. Supplement manufacturer now has tested a suite of popular creatine gummies and found that almost half of them failed to meet label claim for creatine content. Some of them showed detectable levels of a breakdown product, raising stability concerns. Yes, yeah, so like if you were just to mix creatine in water and let it sit, it would start to break down over time. You couldn't mix that up and drink it a month later and just expect to get fully effective, unbroken down creatine, which is likely what's happening in these gummies that have already broken down. They're mixed into some liquid probably, and they start to break down in that form. Now has tested many different sets of products over the years, like Berberine and Astaxanthin. In other installments of the program, the focus has been on lesser known brands selling products in given categories on either Amazon or Walmart.com. Yeah, so there's been so many issues with brands. Like there was an article a couple of years ago about a bunch of brands in Walmart that got found to have no active ingredient in the pills that they were selling. It was just filler. Uh, Amazon has its own set of issues where the, uh, uh, the algorithm can be so manipulated to get low quality brands up to the top of it. And it's just, you really just can't trust that just because something's at the top, that means that it's high quality or something that you should be taking. In this case, the focus is on gummies featuring a particular hero ingredient, creatine. The gummies were purchased on Amazon or direct from companies' websites. Yeah, so like a lot of times when you see these brands that are direct to consumer only or they're only on Amazon, they haven't been listed in the stores because the stores haven't seen the testing that gives them the assurance that what they're selling is actually what it says on the label in the bottle. And you know, for a store chain like ours, if we list products like that, and that brand gets caught, that fly-by-night company, sure, they're gone. They start another one up in a couple of months. Nobody's the wiser. They carry on. But for us, that would be incredibly damaging for our reputation. And we are proud of the carefully curated selection that we have, where we know that what we're selling you and what we're recommending to you is actually good quality. Um, it's so easy for brands to manipulate those algorithms, like I alluded to earlier. They can you know, give people incentive to leave a five-star review, a lot of companies actually will not on Amazon, but outside of Amazon, they'll refund people for their purchase if they leave them a five-star review. So that you transfer them and then you get enough of those reviews, you get ranked high and then the algorithm takes it from there and you get massive sales, not because of the quality of your product or because of genuine rave reviews, but because you outsmarted the algorithm. 
Creatine is a legacy ingredient with a long history of use. According to the Mayo Clinic, people take creatine orally to improve athletic performance and increase muscle mass. People also use oral creatine to treat certain brain disorders, neuromuscular conditions, congestive heart failure, and other conditions, the medical authority added. Yes, what's really cool to see, like, I think we all know creatine is so beneficial for strength, performance, any athletics. It's really cool to see all the other things that are starting to emerge about creatine, the, you know, the research that's starting to come out and the other benefits and how many people can benefit from this product. So really cool to see all that. Creatine, a popular ingredient experiencing 65% growth on Amazon in the last year, plays a role in the ATP cycle within the cell. The most common form found in dietary supplements is creatine monohydrate, which is also by far the most common form used in sports performance studies and research on other endpoints. Yes, yeah, so creatine monohydrate, that's the cheapest, most effective, most research-backed form. That's the form that we recommend in our stores for basically everybody. Unless it upsets your stomach, then you can look into crealkaline or creatine HCL. But other than those reasons, I think creatine monohydrate is, without a doubt, the way to go. Almost all the gummies tested now claim to feature creatine monohydrate, only one featured a different form, which is a patented created creatine HCL form. Let's just talked about that. Now found that seven of the 12 gummies tested met label claim and displayed significant overages. And so even the ones that had creatine, they didn't nail the dosing. And you know, for creatine, it's probably not the end of the world if you get a little bit more than you think you do. But for other ingredients, that's a huge issue. So these manufacturers clearly don't have control over how much they're actually putting into these gummies. And in certain categories of product, that could be a real issue. Six of those seven products claimed a five milligram dosage divided into four or five gummies, depending on the manufacturer. The seventh claimed a 3.6 milligram dosage. Okay, so these both must be typos. This is probably supposed to say a five gram dosage and a 3.6 gram dosage, because if they're actually claiming five milligrams, nobody's going to buy that anyways, because that would do nothing. Little to no creatine found in five products. The five remaining products, however, contain little to no creatine content based on now's tests. In addition, all the failing products display small to significant amounts of creatinine, which is a breakdown product of creatine. Yeah, so when you take creatine, it is going to break down into creatinine in your body. If you get blood work done, you're probably going to have elevated levels of creatinine. Your doctor may be concerned if he doesn't know that you're taking creatine, so he or she. So make sure that you tell your doctor that you're taking creatine so they can factor that in when they're looking at your blood results. Now, Senior Director of Quality said gummies can be a challenging delivery vehicle, and it was impressive to see that some manufacturers appeared to have mastered creatine delivery in this form. Also commented on others that showed little to no creatine content while also displaying signs of creatine degradation. Due to the nature of gummy manufacturing, there's a possibility that creatine and gummy formulations may have degraded to creatinine during manufacturing. Additionally, the instability of creatine in liquid formulations could be a factor contributing to the observed degradation as a result of reduced shelf life. However, it is difficult to say which contributes the most degradation based on one data point. Yeah, so creatine, just you, you can't have it sit in liquid and expect it to be good. So I don't know very much about the gummy manufacturing process, but I imagine it starts as some form of liquid that gets turned into that gummy. And if you're doing that, I can see where that absolutely wouldn't work for maintaining the integrity of the creatine. Over the course of the testing program, now has worked with several trusted lab partners to provide third party to help verify its results. That didn't happen here, is now found that gummy testing capabilities are difficult to find in the market. Yeah, so they didn't get a, another lab to test this because it's tough to find labs that do this type of testing. We were surprised that none of the third party labs we typically use, which we consider the best, said they were able to test these gummies. Given the rapid growth of that delivery system and the regulatory requirement to confirm label compliance, the industry needs to find a solution to this dearth of testing capacity. Yeah, so like the, the gummy category isn't going anywhere. So hopefully more labs start adding this capability to their offering and services because it is going to be really important to start making sure that these gummies that are going to come out are tested, uh, meet their label claims, and are most importantly, not containing any contaminants. Natural Products Insider sought comment from all the failing companies for which contact information could be found. None responded in time for publication. Yep, probably lots of them didn't even respond. A lot of these aren't even really companies. They're just somebody that found the source on Alibaba, imported it, put on a label and started selling it. And um, it's why I'm just such a believer that you need to get your supplements from a trusted source, you know, a, a legitimate supplement store with people that know the industry, that know the brand, that know where they're manufactured, 
um, that have done the due, di due diligence because if you don't, you could be getting from companies like this that just make a website, find a manufacturer somewhere, who knows if it's good or bad, who knows, a lot of these people aren't the ones that are trying to cheat you. They think they're buying a creatine product from their manufacturer, but their manufacturer is cheating them. Um, and they, they don't even know. So it's just really important to get from a trusted source. I, I advise people to steer clear of a lot of these just online only direct to consumer brands. There's a good reason why a lot of them aren't in very many legitimate specialty retailers that know the industry and know the brands. This is what we do. We look into this stuff. We get to really know the people behind the brand. We get to see the certificates of analysis for the products we're carrying. We get to see the third party lab tests for so many of these brands. And we make sure that the ones that we're really getting behind in marketing are safe for you to take and are gonna do what they say they're going to do. I mean, hey, we, we use these products ourselves, all of our store owners and staff, and we all work out, we all use the stuff, we all love the product, we recommend them to our families, and we wanna be sure that what we're getting is actually good, and more importantly, what we're giving to our family and friends is actually good. So um, I guess just, you know, buyer beware, make sure that you're not just buying the highest ranked thing on some algorithm-based site or whatever company has the best Google SEO rankings and goes to the top and make sure that if you're not going to get it from a supplement source that you trust, a supplement company or store that you trust, that you're actually doing the due diligence on the brands. Because like I said earlier, this isn't just a product that you buy and hey, maybe that phone case turned out to be not so good of quality. It's something you're putting in your body that can actually cause health impacts and effects over time. If you like this video and want to see more, please like, subscribe, share it with a friend, especially if that friend is taking creatine gummies and needs to see this. Thank you for watching and we'll see you next time.